Okay, let's take a look at our setup procedures for our drill press. Now, as is the case with every machine, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to clean the machine off and make sure that it's clean and ready for us. Where our drill presses are situated in the shop, we have an air hose to the left and to the right of these machines for easy access. So I'm going to grab this air hose and I'm going to clean off the table of the machine. I'm also cleaning off the backer material that I'm going to use when I drill my hole. And then I can return this to its hook. The next thing we need to do is we need to make sure we've got the correct drill bit in loaded into the machine. I would like to drill a quarter inch hole which is going to be bigger than what's in here currently. And so I need to change out my drill bit. So let's look at how to do that. So here is my quarter inch drill bit. And you can see it's a larger diameter than the bit that's currently mounted in the machine. So I need to remove this drill bit. To remove this, I'm simply going to grab this black upper ring and this black lower ring and I'm going to spin the lower ring to my left. And when I do that, what I'm doing is I'm opening up the jaws, and this is going to drop that drill bit out. Now, before I do anything else, I want to take the, the old drill bit, and I want to put it back into the drill index where it belongs, so it's there for the next person. Next. I'm going to take my quarter inch drill bit and I need to mount it up in between the jaws of the drill press. Because it's larger, it doesn't fit. So I need to rotate this lower ring to the left to open up those jaws until the drill bit fits up inside. Using my left hand, I'm going to hold the bit gently. Using my right hand, I'm going to spin this bottom ring back to the right. And now I can feel tension on it. It's holding the drill bit. But in order to be locked, I now have to grab the bottom ring and the top ring again. And this time, I'm going to turn the bottom ring to the right as tight as I can get it. And that locks the jaws around this drill bit so I'm ready to drill my hole. The next adjustment we need to make is to the depth stop. So. With my backer material on my table, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the spindle down until my drill bit hits my backer material. And I'm going to hold it tight right there. Now what I need to do is I need to lower the upper stop down to the black bracket. So I can either spin this and it will slowly lower down, or I can push the quick release button right here, and now I can just slide it down. Now, the depth stop is set. What this does is it guarantees that I'm going to drill all the way through my workpiece into my backer material, but it also guarantees that I'm not going to drill down into the tabletop. You can see here, now that I have taken the time to adjust the depth stop, that when I lower the spindle on the drill press, it stops right here, just below the surface of my backer material, but above the table. Correctly adjusting the depth stop will prevent you from drilling into the table, which could either damage the table or damage the drill bits. I have this piece of backer material here. This is simply a scrap piece of plywood that we are not concerned about. We are always going to use a piece of backer material when we're at the drill press because it does two things. The first thing that it does is it helps protect our table. We want a buffer zone between our workpiece and the table surface. Otherwise, when we drill through our workpiece, 
and come out the bottom of our workpiece, we're going to immediately hit the table. And we don't want to do that. So we use a backer piece. The second thing that the backer material does is it supports the underside of our workpiece. Wood is a fibrous material. So as this drill bit tries to push through the fibers on the back of your workpiece, if it's not supported by something, you're going to get a lot of tear out and you're going to get a, a hole that's not clean. So by using a piece of backer material and holding our workpiece on top of that, when the drill bit comes through the bottom of our workpiece, it will be supported and give us a much cleaner and more accurate cut. Now that we've set our depth stop and we've located our hole, we are ready to go ahead and drill a hole through this workpiece. Before we do that, I feel like the fence is in the way a little bit. So I'm going to release both levers, slide this out the back, and put it away. Now I'm not going to just drop this on the floor. It lives on the rack behind all of the drill bits so that we know where it is the next time somebody needs to use it. I'm ready to go ahead and turn on the machine and make sure that my speed is adjusted correctly. For this type of drill bit, in this type of material, I want to be running about 2,000 RPMs. So I'm going to turn on the machine, and you can see we're running at about 1360. So I'm going to reach back, and I'm going to turn the speed adjustment handle. And as I do this, you can see the speed of the machine climbing. And now we're up close to 2,000 RPMs, which is where I want to be. The next thing I need to do is I need to line up my drill bit with the mark that I made when I was doing my layout. So holding my workpiece here and with the drill turned off, I'm going to lower the quill down, line up the point of the drill bit with my center punched hole right here at the intersection of my six inch and one inch markings. Now I can hold this piece, I moved it, so I need to readjust it. Now I can hold this piece steady in position. Now that my speed is adjusted, I can go ahead and turn on the machine and drill my hole. I'm holding my workpiece steady with my left hand and slowly lowering the quill with my right hand. And now with gentle pressure, I'm going to drill through my workpiece. Once I've finished drilling my hole, I want to check and make sure I got all the way through. You can see that I did not get all the way through my workpiece. And that's because the handle of the drill press was actually hitting the camera as I was drilling. So I'm going to move the camera, and I'm going to re-drill this hole. So now I've got a partially drilled hole, but I didn't get all the way through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my workpiece steady with my left hand. I'm going to turn on the machine. And then as I lower the quill down, I'm going to slowly adjust until the drill bit lines up right with the hole bit. So let's go ahead and do that. Once the machine is up to speed, I can start lowering the quill. And I'm adjusting to get it close. Now, the, the drill bit is going to center on that hole. Now I can hold my workpiece tight, and I'm going to drill all the way down until I hit my depth stop. Now when I raise back up, I can stop the machine. And when we look at the back, we can see that I have drilled all the way through. You can also see that we have a nice clean cut on the back side because we used a piece of backer material when we drilled our hole. The final step is simply to clean the machine off. So I'm going to grab my air hose and blow everything off. I can leave this piece of backer material here at the drill press because the next person who comes here is going to need this 
to do their work as well. I can also leave this drill bit loaded in the machine. It's important when you walk up to the machine to check the drill bit to make sure it's the right size. You never want to assume that it is that the right size drill bit is loaded in the machine. But when I walk away, I do not need to remove this. I can leave it right there. That is a secure place for this drill bit to live until the next person is ready to use this machine. <laughs> 